Debt and taxes make the rich richer. Debt and taxes make the poor and middle class poor. In every one of us is a poor person. There's still a poor person inside me. There's also a middle class person. And the middle class person wants security. They want that steady paycheck. The paycheck was one of the most damaging things you can take in your life. He says, the moment you take a paycheck, you're an employee. And that's the mindset. And that is a rich person. The rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs. We acquire real estate. So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make, and how much I pay in taxes. And because I'm an entrepreneur, as well as an investor in real estate, I pay zero tax. When we have obsolete ideas, we get obsolete results. So what's happening for most people, the idea of going to school, getting a job, working hard, saving money, getting out of the debt, buying your house because it's an asset, investing for the long term, is obsolete. The world has changed. You always have to look at the big picture. Too many people look at, well, what's, what's going to happen to me? When you look at the big picture, you're also going to know that when something bad happens, something good's going to happen. But you've got to prepare for whatever is coming. If you think the last, next 20 years will be like the last 20 years, you're going to get creamed. You know, when you and I go to the supermarket and we buy a carton of milk, we always check for the expiration date. But most people do not check for the expiration date on their brains. Instead of get out of debt, I get into debt. You know, I just refinanced 300 million in debt. I went from 5% to 2.5% interest. I made a fortune. Every month, more money comes in because my cost of money has gone down. So while some Especially financial today. experts are saying get out of debt, I'm saying learn how to use debt. Mm. See, when I came back from seven, in Vietnam in January of 73, mm -hmm. the first thing my rich dad said to me was go to school to learn how to invest in real estate. It wasn't real estate, it was how to use debt and taxes. Debt and taxes make the rich richer. Debt and taxes make the poor and middle class poor. So all the rich guys who are doctors or lawyers or, you know, those guys, they're hmm. getting creamed. They don't know why. Doctors are getting creamed. Oh yeah, they're making more money, but the take home is less. Sure. You know, I, I, my doctor just yelled at me, he's happy, he says, Oh, guess what, I finally made a million dollars. So I said, yeah, well, well, how much you pay in tax? He says, 750,000 in taxes. Mm. So his net was about 400,000. That's not bad. But when I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And the reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. So that's why lesson number one at Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. So every time I make, let's say, a million dollars as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I immediately invest it in real estate. I have a four to one step up. So I put a million dollars in real estate. I get four, four hundred. I get four million from the bank. That's why I love banks. But the banks are screwing everybody else. You know, terrible. But it's good for me. That's why you say when you print, it's good for you, but when you print, it's bad for people that work for money. Because when you print, savers get creamed and people who work for money get creamed. When they print, debtors get rich. The world changed in 1971 when President Nixon took us off the gold standard and money became debt. And yet people, well, I want a high paying job. Well, that's an obsolete idea. Get out of debt is an obsolete idea. You should learn how to get into debt, how to use debt to get rich, and they'll never teach you about taxes. The reason the 1% is way up here and the 99% are going this way is because when you print money, two things happen, inflation and taxes. And any entrepreneur thinks, I'm just gonna make money and I'm gonna start a business and make a lot of money because what we talk about, they really have got to smell the roses. You know, that's not what the real entrepreneurs are doing. Most entrepreneurs, there's 28 million small business owners mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. 24 million are, are, are what are one-person entrepreneurs. They're called non-employee entrepreneurs. So the, because, and that's what happens is when people don't really understand what an entrepreneur does. So most big people are self-employed, but they're not really entrepreneurs. The self-employed pay the highest taxes of all. Nobody tells them that. Yeah, it, it's also called the entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. But what we were actually talking about was there's no such thing as a bad economy. 
you know, those external, you and I, we all have an external economy, but we also have an internal economy. Mm -hmm. And the willpower is to change our internal economy. So for me, I can see the good and I can see the bad. I don't really give a damn because I'm going to be rich anyway. But a poor person with a poor personal economy, all they're going to see is a bad economy because they don't know how to make money in any economy. And a middle class person, they have a middle class economy. You know, they, what they want is a nice house, and a steady paycheck, and the job, and the car. And so when you take their job away, to them, that's disaster. So all I'm saying to people, and it's what Bucky Fuller taught me, is always two sides, you know what I mean? You know, to use plural, at minimum two. So if you think the economy is bad, it's because your economy is bad. If you think that steady, you know, employment is important, then you'll see an, an, an economy without jobs. Your economy. Your, Your economy DNA versus economy. the external economy. Got it. What you control versus what you can't control. I can control. Yeah, it's called, sure. a, it's called an internal focus mm -hmm. versus an external focus. Mm -hmm. So the real entrepreneur has an internal focus. But if they fall down, they say, oh, this is good because I'm going to go up higher. You know, the average person will fall down and say, oh, I'm going to take some Prozac. Or, or the, if somebody has some mistakes, all oh, the mistakes don't matter. Well, mistakes, mistakes matter. It means you didn't know something. But a real entrepreneur, the way they fall down, they go, they always can go up. They can stand back up and go higher. And no matter what happens to them, they get stronger and better and smarter and happier. But a person with a weak internal mindset is that they're so afraid of what happens, it generally happens. Like, you know, people are afraid of losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no so, doubt. So everything you, you comes through you. Yeah, so the entrepreneur, first job is to control inside here, not outside there. So as an entrepreneur, you know, if, if, if Rich Dad folded, I just start another company. I don't need a paycheck. I don't need anybody to take care of me. If my government doesn't like me, I move to another country because they need entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So the entrepreneur is not so much the business. The entrepreneur is really the mindset and the skill sets and the different set of rules. You see, I don't operate, small business does not operate in the same rules as big business. Entrepreneurs have one thing in common. They keep going. They'll change the rules. They'll reinvent the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't just take one answer. So a real entrepreneur, it really makes no difference which country you're in. That's my belief. So, you know, I, I love that. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just a mindset. You know, it's F you. You mess with me, I'll find a way around it. You know, I have a friend who is multi, multi, multi family rich guy from France. He, he started buying vineyards in Napa and Sonoma. So he went back to the French government and says, it's his wine. He says, I want to ship my wine in bulk to California. And the government says you can't do that. So this what, is the French government saying so you can't share. Yeah, and here's the guy, he's I think he's five generations, you know, French wine guy. This guy is this guy is an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. He says, okay, I can't ship it in barrels. The guy goes, yeah, he says, okay, I'll ship it in bottles. And so now they're all confused because he didn't break any rules. So I'll say it again. Entrepreneur is a mindset first, a skill set, and rules. And depending upon whether you're an employee or a small business, mm -hmm. the rules are different. The mindsets are different. The skill sets are different. So what you're saying is education, the mindsets can be taught. And if I learn the mindsets, and uh, 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 earlier you talked about when I asked you a question about can somebody go out there and do something about this, there's, there's got to be desire. But if I feed my mind, I got desire, I have an opportunity to make it as an entrepreneur. Desire and ambition. Sure. That's what it takes. Sure. That's why I say everybody can, everybody can open a lemonade stand, but very few can be a rich one. We're at the end of the industrial age. And the industrial age was, you know, and when an entrepreneur was in the industrial age and the entrepreneurs created jobs. For mm -hmm. example, Henry Ford, when he started Ford Motor, he created millions of jobs, mm -hmm. thousands of jobs. Sure. This is the information age. The end of power is what's happening today. It is the end of the American empire. What's going to happen from here is what spooks everybody, and nobody really knows. I mean, Bucky Fuller taught me. He passed away in 1983, and that's when I stepped in to do what I had to do. He says you always have to look at the big picture. Too many people look at, well, what's, what's going to happen to me? 
when you look at the big picture, you're also going to know <clears throat> that when something bad happens, something good's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you've got to prepare for whatever is coming. 